Greetings and salutations, my esteemed Laddingtons. Today I'm comparing a book recommendation, Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. Shout out to my good friend Johan, who borrowed me this book actually a few years back, and I only recently got around to read it. But before I begin to talk about the book, I would just like to encourage you all to follow me on Telegram and the Legio Gloria Instagram account. We will release this fine Hammer of Thor tomorrow, so if you want more information about that, I will post on Instagram and also on the newsletter that you can sign up for on legiogloria.com. Now, anyway, oh, also a uh, second thing I will mention before I begin to talk about this book. I know everyone is always eager to comment something in the beginning of the video, so uh, I might as well throw out a suggestion now. Let me know if you have read any historic fiction or any history books set in ancient Greece. After all, it's summer and we need to optimize our motivation levels. And I always find that reading something about Greece or Rome in the summer, it's, um, it's a good fit. So comment down below if you have any book recommendations on uh, ancient Greece. So, true to my word, I've read this fine book. And uh, as you might discern from the title, it's about the Battle of Thermopylae. Now, a note on the film 300. I saw it when I was 17. It made a huge impression on me. You know, it's uh, basically made for, you know, ultimate testosterone motivation. And, um, you know, I was pumped up and I said to myself, you know, one day I want to look like Gerard Butler, Leonidas in uh, that film. So it's always been a great motivating factor for me gym wise to just uh, remember how the Spartans look there so nothing over the top like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, a lot of guys grew up watching his films I didn't because well I'm not old enough to have grown up with him as a hero so my physique ideals were never you know bodybuilding but it was more yeah how Leonidas look in uh, that film so anyway, the film is based on a comic that is based on the battle, so it's not super historically accurate, but it's a nice film anyway, that you can watch before hitting the gym. This, however, is more historically accurate, so if you want a good, you know, somewhat brief overview of Spartan society, Spartan relationship with the subjugated slave caste of the Helots, um, how their military structure looked like, this is a good book. The only critique I have in terms of it as a fiction novel, it's a bit gruesome at times. I don't really need to have, you know, any sob stories to make the main character more appealing. Uh, but other than that, it's a very good book, very immersive. I read it through quite quickly. Uh, it's not overly thick, but it's also very immersive. So you want to read through it in, in one go. And uh, basically it follows... A guy who's not a Spartan, but he fights as a squire for the Spartans. So you get sort of like a third person view of Spartan society. Um, and it follows 10 years previous from... And it follows from 10 years before the Battle of Thermopylae up until the battle itself. And yeah, as is my custom, I have picked out a few segments which I thought would be good motivating quotes for you to uh, partake in. So uh, let's delve into the book. So this is a quote on um, Spartan mentality in terms of individualism. And it's a quote from a man in the book here. Have your instructors taught you why the Spartans excuse without penalty the warrior who loses his helmet or breastplate in battle, but punish with loss of all citizenship rights the man who disregards his shield? And that is, because a warrior carries helmet and breastplate for his own protection, but his shield for the protection of the whole line. So basically it's a good you know, metaphor also for putting your tribe or putting your mannerbund, putting your uh, military unit, putting your brothers first. You know, you can be careless with your own security, but dropping your shield, dropping the, dropping the defense of your brothers, it's inexcusable. So that is also something to keep in mind in this day and age of, you know, super... Um, hyper individualism so you know take care of your brothers don't be a liability and this can also be if you are you know in a group of men and you know yourself that you are weak it's the same thing as dropping your shield you become a liability to others so it's not okay 
Um, anyway, that was just a nice little quote there, I thought. Moving on to a very interesting term, pseudo Andrea. And what this means is basically a faked courage. And the example they use here is when the enemy starts banging their shields, starts shouting, start behaving really aggressively. And this is something I've talked about before as well, that it's usually not the most confident guy that needs to, you know, posture up and act all tough. The truly tough guys, they have no need to, you know, posture in that way. They have no need to act tough because they have that calm confidence. The best example I know of this is Fedor Emelianenko. He was the best MMA fighter in the world um, 15 or 20 years ago. And it was quite fun. I remember one, a classmate I have, when I went to school, he said, uh, because we talked about him, and he was like, yeah, this guy looks like he's going out for a grocery shop when he was going into the ring. And uh, it's completely true. He was completely untouched by any emotion. He just walked into the ring, got the job done, didn't you know, need to have an intense stare down, etc. Now, of course, I understand certain fighters, they have intense stare downs to, you know, hype the fight and everything, but uh, Fedor, he just, uh, no Seuda Andrea at all, calm as could be, walked into the ring, no emotion showing on his face, and um, yeah, got the job done. Same thing with the Spartans, you know, they don't need to hype themselves up overly much. Um, so that is something to keep in mind as well, and a term you can uh, remember, Seuda Andrea. If I pronounce it correctly, I don't know, but uh, keep that in mind. Also, when you see a guy who's posturing really much in, a, you know, he wishes to appear dangerous, it's one thing to be, you know, posturing in a, you know, cocky, funny way, uh, in a charismatic way. Uh, that is one thing. But if someone tries to be intimidating by being all um, obnoxious, you don't have so much to worry about if you know how to fight. So anyway, moving on. To a motivating quote, if you want to hit the gym, I thought this was uh, a bit fun. Uh, just, you know, well written to uh, explain how um, aesthetic someone is. So I'm jumping right into a quote here. Polynikis' supreme physical beauty, in every aspect of his person, face as well as physique, the knight was formed as flawlessly as a god, naked in the gymnasium, even alongside scores of youths and warriors blessed in comeliness, and elevated by their training to the peak of condition, Polynikis stood out, without equal, surpassing all others in symmetry of form and faultlessness of physical structure. Clothed in white robes for the assembly, he shone like Adonis, and armed for war, with bronze of his shield burnished, his scarlet cloak across his shoulders, and horsehair-crested helmet of a knight pushed back upon his brow, he shone forth, peerless, as Achilles. So if you have a need of some extra motivation to push through some reps in the gym, just envision yourself as um, such a character. And then a last quote, also by said beautiful man, and he explains why he hates a younger man and is um, a bit harsh with the discipline. So, um, so he's asked, why do you hate the young man so much? And he responds, because he does not love glory. It's a good a reason as any to hate someone, because they don't love glory. So anyway, that was just some epic quotes I found. But all in all, you know, I've talked about historical fiction as a genre before, and this is a great example of it, that you can gain so much wisdom from it by just uh, reading a good uh, fiction book. Uh, so all in all, I can definitely recommend it. Um, you know, it's not overly long, as I said, it's very immersive, so you'll probably read through it quite quickly. It gives you a good insight into Spartan society and, you know, in reawakening a sense of European identity, uh, Greece, the cradle of civilization. And um, yeah, why not take the opportunity when it's sunny outside to read about some ancient, glorious Spartans. So anyway, that was just a uh, book recommendation, and uh, again, follow me on Telegram and Instagram and all the usual social media, and uh, I will see you in the next video. So thank you for watching. XOXO. Boom.